Philippine Independence Day, 1946. This was a big international event, but the Philippines did not yet have a part Department of Foreign Affairs and had to rely on the U.S. government for much of the preparations. May 1946 saw the start of the flurry of events to plan out the final days of the Commonwealth and prepare for Independence Day. A joint Filipino-American community was formed to iron out details. The Manila Hotel, which had been gutted during the Battle of Manila, was cleaned up and prepared for gala events. Invitations were issued to distinguish guests from the United States and various countries. President Truman was invited, but he declined. Independence-related contests were launched for an appropriate poster, essay, poem, and hymn. A U.S. flag was to be hands-on by past and present Philippine First Ladies to be presented to the President Truman. Commemorative postage stamps, medals, and other souvenirs were issued. The venue for independence Rights was chosen in a stage shape and the form of ship's row, or symbolizing the ships of state, was built with towering pillars behind it. The stage and grandstand were built in front of the iconic memorial of the Philippine national hero, Osir in preparation to the climax and Philippine independence on July 4. Private homes and government buildings were decorated. Bands parade and gave concerts. The University of the Philippines Conservatory of Music held a gala concert of the Rizal Coliseum, where numerous international sports matches were held. Distinguished, distinguished visitors from the U.S. and other countries arrived. The U.S. Navy's Task Force 77 anchored in Manila Bay to salute the birth of the Republic. It consisted of the flagship USS Bremerton, two aircraft carriers, two cruisers, and seven destroyers. Among the very important persons who arrived in the first day of July was General Mark Arthur, who flew from Tokyo. Representing the U.S. government was High Commissioner McNutt, now destined to be the first U.S. Ambassador to the Republic of the Philippines. From the United States were Senator Tidings, Representative Bell, U.S. Postmaster General Robert E. Hanigan, former Governor General Francis B. Harrison, and others. Representative from 27 nations arrived, among them the French Worldwide One hero, Lee Chen Zinovic Pickoff, at that time serving with the Supreme Commander for the Al Allied Powers in Tokyo. Thailand's Chief of Staff in Manila Bay were Australian, Portuguese, and Thai warships. All these activities were taking place as the Cold War began. The Uni United States tasted an atomic bomb in Bikini Atoll on July 1. Communists linked Movements were beginning to threaten the post-war order. On July 3, the Philippine Congress accepted the Bill Trade Act and authorized President Roas to sign an executive agreement with the U.S. laying the groundwork for formal nego negotiations that same day. Ross and McNutt visit the commander of Task Force 77 on his flagship. Later, they recorded messages to be broadcast nationwide and to the United States. McNutt hosted a reception at his official residence in Cape Dade with a formal dinner in honor of Rojas at the Manila Hotel. Thursday, July 4, 1946 was a cloudy, sunless day. It was the rainy season in the Philippines, but this did not dump the excitement building up towards the Philippine Independence Ceremony. Religious services were held in the various churches of Manila and provincial capital cities and towns. Guests began arriving at the venue shortly before 7 in the morning. 
Digna dignitaries arrived from 7.20. The crowd craned their necks to get a glimpse of Jen. Mac Arthur, a bug sounded and the audience rose to welcome President Rojas and his wife at 7.55. He was followed by Vice President Elpidio Quirino and finally High Commissioner Macnat accompanied by their res respective waves. With Macnat serving as MC, the program began at Pricely, 8 a.m. The Green Crib, Robert F. Wilmer, ranking protestant in the Philippines, gave the invocation. Macnat then introduced the speakers. There were wild cheers for Senator Tidings and General MacArthur. Tidings reviewed the events which lead to this day and then wished the new republic Godspeed. MacArthur reviewed the special relationship between the Philippines and the United States. The highlight of the programs was MacNutt's reading of President Stroman's Proclamation of Independence. As he began speaking, a heavy downpour drenched the audience but they braved the rain. The downpour lifted in time for Makna to read the proclamation, which first laid out the legal basis for the United States. Acquisition of the Philippines, the United States desired to grant the Philippines independence and the provisions of the Tidings MacDofe Act. Truman, as President of the United States, then withdrew all rights of the possessions, supervision, jurisdiction, control, or sovereignty exercised by the United States over the territory and people of the Philippines and recognized the independence of the Philippines. Macnat ended with his own words, A new nation is born. Long live to the Republic of the Philippines. May God bless and prosper the Philippines people. Keep them safe and free. At 9.15 a.m., the U.S. Arm Army Band played the U.S. National Anthem as Macnat began lowering the American flag. President Ross pulling on the same cord began raising the Philippine flag to the accomp accompaniment of the Philippine National Anthem played by the Philippine Army Band. So first, we will discuss the flags of the Philippines and U.S. meet during the raising and lowering ceremony from the collection of Dr. Ricardo T. Jose. As the United States and the Philippine flags pass each other, they touch as if in a last kiss, a last kiss. As the Philippines flag fluttered from the top of the flagpole, United States, Australian, Portuguese, and Thai warships in the bay fired a 21-gun salute. Church bells throughout the Philippines rang and a whistle announced that the Philippines was now independent. Vice President Quirino then took his oath, followed by the President Rojas. These were administered by the Chief Justice Manuel V. Moran of the Philippine Supreme Court. Rojas proceeded with this inaugural address, as we are the masters of our own destiny, so too must we bear all the consequences of our actions. He announced, The Philippines was no longer protected by the mantle of America's sovereignty and thus we find our own way. We can retreat within ourselves. On all fronts, the doctrine of absolute sovereignty is yielding ground, but we have yet a greater bulwark today, the friendship and the devotions of America. Our safest course is in the glistening wake of America, who sure the advanced with mighty pro breaks for a smaller craft the waves of fear. The flag of the Philippines flies alone July 4, 1946, courtesy of U.S. Signal Cooperation. The future direction of the Philippines under President Rojas was the thus charted. And to highlight this orientation, he and Macnat signed as an, an agreement for the establishment of diplomatic relations and an interim trade agreement. Ross now signed as the President of the Republic of the Philippines and Macnat as the first U.S. Ambassador. A chorus of 1,000 Voices College students all then sung the Philippines Independence Team. This had been the winner of the Independence Team contest composed by the acclaimed composer Resti O'Malley. The official program ended with the closing invocations by Most Reverend Cabrel Rias, Filipino Archbishop of the Cebu. 
As the program ended, a bongo call sounded at 11 a.m. to signal the start of the Civic Military Parade. Units from the Philippines and U.S. Armed Forces marched in the splendor, followed by the Filipino veterans of the 1890s Revolution and the World War II guerrilla members. As the aged Revolutionary War veterans marched past the grandstand, U.S. bombers and the fighters flew overhead, spelling first a V for a victory and then the letter P and R representing the Republic of the Philippines. The float carrying Filipinas in the Miss Colombia on a parade at the celebrations, courtesy of the U.S. Signal Corporation. The military contingents were followed by the several floats from the different government offices and the schools. Of note was a general auditing office represented by a bulldog watching over a safe. The last float contained the figures of the Filipinas, representing 